Hello and welcome to the 105th episode of my podcast for the Quantum Grammar Shoot. I'm your host, Colin Jason Hyphen Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. This is the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of in which I will share with you uh, some personal anecdotes, stories, histories, uh, my opinions on topics as seen through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, the grammar technology brought to the public by Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. And this podcast, again, is opinion and for educational and entertainment purposes only. Just for good fun. And if you find some educational knowledge, cultivation, value in it, well, bonus. So this particular podcast, I will be expounding upon the critical need for humility when one is using correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now, you may have some preconceived notions as to what humility is or what it means. When you use it in relation to correct sentence structure, it may take on a different look than you're used to. Because humility must be used within the context of the balance of the honor and the grace, the maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, and the position of the peace and neutrality. There are those that I see on YouTube and on the internet and in the public who fancy themselves as some sort of leader or be all end all authority and this is to me <laughs> this is a red flag if i see someone talking about how humble they are going on about i'm a very humble person i'm i'm i have humility and so on and so forth when quite obviously the way they talk the rest of the time is a direct dichotomy to that. That tells me that they are the opposite of what they are claiming. It's like someone who goes on and on about what a great person they are, how honest they are, how trustworthy they are. Things like that. If people have to expound upon that to you, if they have to go on and on about talking about themselves in that fashion, then it usually means that the opposite is true. Because as far as those things go, as far as someone being a leader, as far as someone being humble, as far as someone being uh, intelligent, or whatever you want to call it, like these attributes that give people esteem in our eyes an individual doesn't give themselves that in the public that is given to them by others others see that and then say it like for example people could say well Colin David Eiffel when Colin Miller was he was very kind hearted and very patient I can say that about him because I had personal interactions with him. I spoke with him on the phone during the last year of his life. I communicated with him via email, Skype, text messages, and and telephone calls. As my perception of him. Never once have I ever heard David Wynn Miller say that about himself, that he is kind, or that he is patient, or that he is humble. (laughs) Definitely never heard him say that one. But the point I'm making is these are things that other people ascribe to you, not that you give to yourself. I mean, you may think those things internally, but to speak them is a completely different story. It's sort of like the fighter 
who trash talks how great they are and then they jump in the ring and get whooped. You know, no one else is saying how great they are. They are. I know psychologically sometimes you have to build yourself up like that. But the point I'm making is in the public, if you have to tell people how humble you are, you are actually doing the opposite of what your intention is. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort of switch gears and I'm going to share some of my lessons of the humility that taught me humility with the balance of honor and grace, maintenance of rule one, rule equal, and position of peace and neutrality. I remember back in 2019 uh, when I was gaining YouTube subscribers by the hundreds, my channel was really, really growing very fast. I would be getting multiple emails and messages and things from people saying, oh, wow, Jason, you are the next David Wynn Miller, or you are you have taken over from David Wynn Miller, or even you telling me that I explained the grammar better than David Wynn Miller ever did. And even going so far as to saying, Jason, why don't you take up the mantle? You're the only one qualified to do it. Why don't you claim the flag? Why don't you be the leader? So on and so forth. And I very, very quickly put the brakes on that simply because it was not a goal of mine or an intention or volition of mine to be any type of leader to anyone. I didn't want to have control over anyone. I didn't want anyone to follow me in that sense because I genuinely at that time and more so now even, try to establish a geometric level playing field where no one is above anyone else. Everyone is equal, rule one, rule equal, because uh, we come into this domain the same way. We're born the same way. We put our pants on one leg at a time. We all use the restroom and we all leave the same way. So, I mean, there's to me, that's part of the problem of society is the fact that there are authoritarian constructs all around us and i didn't want to propagate that i didn't want to be a part of that and so therefore there i, I squashed that right off the bat well it's very of course i mean i'm i'm a human being it's very flattering to hear people say that but i put that out of my mind because that's not my intention at all it's not my volition i don't want to take anyone's place I want to be the best at what I do, of course. As much as, you know, this is kind of a dichotomy. As much as I don't care for competition, I am a very competitive individual by nature. Uh, my wife will definitely tell you that. I am super competitive. And so I try to turn that inwards and compete with myself to get myself to be better than I was before doing whatever it is that I'm doing. I, I try my hardest to do that. Especially with this grammar, I try to be the best that I can be at this grammar. Not the best out of everyone on earth, but the best, as far as I'm concerned, better than I was yesterday. Because I can tell you right now, it doesn't matter who you are. It, it, and say, for example, in mixed martial arts or boxing or whatever, it doesn't matter how good you think you are. There's always going to be someone that's better than you. Always, 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 if you think in those terms. And I can tell you right now that I can think right off the top of my head of one person that is light years beyond me as far as grammar knowledge and the, psych and the knowledge of the psychology of the grammar and how it works and the closures you can get from it and going into the depth of closure. And that, of course, is my brother and the guy that led me, guided me to the closure on correct sentence structure. And his name is Colin Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tohidi, Colin Afferman. Um, I'll be the first to admit that. And I give that due honor and grace to, to his knowledge level. 
I still to this day defer to him if I want to discuss something about grammar. And he will always, he has always been there to do that with me. And I'm very fortunate in that sense to have someone like that. And of course, I try to fill that role for others, for my students that need that. I definitely try to be there for them to discuss certain things with them. And so this comes into the volition of, I don't know whether I'm humble or not. I just know that I try my best to be that. I'm also aware that pride leads to a fall. And when you get thinking that you're the best at something, you start feeling comfortable uh, with your knowledge level that you don't need to, they, they, that there's nothing possibly you could learn anymore that you're, you're done and you're the best and blah, blah, blah. When you start thinking like that, that's when the downward trajectory starts, <laughs> so to speak. That, that's when you start going on that rum line to the bottom. And I have no volition whatsoever of being on that path at all. I'm always open to learning. But this is in accordance with my knowledge level of grammar. So I try to cultivate, uh, I try to cultivate the condition of state of humility within myself, whether that manifests or not. I'm not really one to judge that. You would be the one to judge that. This is based upon my knowledge level. So it's also, again, in the context of those three principles that I keep repeating: rule one, rule equal, peace, neutrality, honor, grace. This is all Kuliana. If someone approaches me in a hostile manner, whereas before, maybe a couple of years ago, I would be hesitant to approach it in a confrontational manner, that type of individual, I would give back to them the same energy that I would give back to anyone, meaning I try to utilize kindness and not give back any of the confrontational energy that was being directed towards me. That is no longer true. Now, because of the knowledge level and the confidence I have, and confidence is not a bad thing. Pride, however, can be a negative thing. But confidence is not if it is well served, meaning if it has a foundation. It's just like a, you know, just like as I'm very fond of using these analogies, it's like a fighter that knows how to fight. If I'm walking down the street, I'm not worried about physical confrontation. I'm aware and I don't, you know, because of my situational awareness is such to a heightened degree that I wouldn't even put myself in a situation where physical violence would be necessary. But if that comes to me, I'm not worried about it because I know I can handle myself. And I know that, that it'll, it'll probably turn out in my favor and not so much for the other individual or individuals. Same thing with this grammar. If you've used it over and over and over, then you know what you can do. You're confident with your abilities. It's not pride. It's confidence. Pride comes in when you start bragging about things. And start being condescending for no reason. Now to get back to what I was saying. When someone approaches me in a condescending manner. Making critiques and things like that. I always, always direct it back to the grammar. And I immediately try to establish a knowledge level. Now this, this is basic judge mechanic right there. Establishing knowledge. What knowledge does this individual have to critique me? Where are they getting their information from? How are they approaching it? Do they show any evidence of quantum grammar knowledge? And 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they don't. And if they do, it's at such a rudimentary and 
mixed up, mashed up level that I, they don't have closure on the grammar. Period, end of story. And so depending upon who they are, if I'm familiar with them or not, depends upon how I will correspond with them. So if they bring in the negative confrontational energy, depending upon my knowledge level of them, what they're doing, what they're saying, and the manner in which they're behaving, that will determine how I respond to them. Whether I send back the energy equally, whether I double that confrontational energy and just knock them off the off the vessel, jettison them off the vessel, or whether I'm kind and exercise a little bit of grace and give them a chance to basically correct their vessel and behavior to a more rule one, rule equal, a more kinder and less negative way. And if I give them that chance and then they come back and they don't correct it, within the terms and conditions of my vessel, which again, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, well then, I just blow them off the vessel then. Using the grammar. Because as David Windmiller has, was fond of saying, it's like using a wrecking ball to swat a fly. And like I say, it's like using a nuclear bomb to swat a fly. And that's exactly what happens every single time. But I'm very judicious in the way that I use it. And again, I try to cultivate a sense of humility. Whereas in the past, however, I would always err on the side of, of kindness and never try to be confrontational or use that type of confrontational energy. Now, knowing what I know, going through what I've gone through, having the experience I have, over 20,000 hours of, of performance and creating document contract postal vessel court venues and winning cases and so on and so forth... Now, it doesn't bother me to do that because it's Kuliana. What you give me, I'm going to give back to you. Rule one, rule equal. And if you violate my terms and conditions, then those terms are off the table now. And now I'll do what, I'll have to, what I have to do if I think I am protecting my construct from harm. I will do what I have to do to eliminate you as a threat. Period. End of story. And I think anyone out there can agree that this is a reasonable kuleana. So to get back to what I was saying about humility, I am also in a condition of state where I am very grateful for where I am who I am, and the support I've had. Not only from the 5,100, I think, now subscribers I have, which I hope to grow that, because the bigger the channel gets, the more this knowledge gets out there. So I appreciate it if you would share this. Uh, but also the members who have been joining the channel. I'm grateful for the students who have contacted me and taking workshops. I'm definitely grateful to my brother and tutor, Raven. I'm very, very, very grateful to my beautiful wife who has supported me and who loves me and who's been by my side doing this, although she's not, she, she's actually been a guest on For the Quantum Grammar Shoe podcast a couple times, which you may or may not know that, but this was a, a couple years ago. She came on anonymously, but uh, now I'm kind of giving a little reveal. But you will, you will see that if you go back and look at those older episodes. She's not. Uh, she eschews the spotlight. Also, one of my best students, Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille, who has become a friend and a brother. Also, another good friend and brother and student, well, former student, colon Joshua hyphen David colon Adams. Uh, we actually met, just like I met Ricardo in person, I've met Josh in person. Uh, he, and his, he and his wife 
and we're very good friends. And it's just great to have to develop and cultivate these types of relationships. And, you know, gosh, if I, if I had, um, you know, it's a great role model for humility, it would be Joshua. Uh, the guy is so, you know, super intelligent and humble at the same time and just giving and kind and if everyone in the world could be like him holy cow if they could be like josh or like raven or like ricardo wow what a beautiful place this would be eh not that it's not beautiful no i'm not saying that at all as uh as one of my favorite graffiti bombers says it would be more beautifuler <laughs> shout out to the boom 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 cap from new york uh, I digress. I do that a lot. So I'm trying to give thanks to a lot of the people who have supported me, helped me, taught me. Because one of the best ways to learn this grammar is to actually teach it. No kidding. When you teach something, you learn faster yourself. I remember when I first started teaching... Back in early 2018, yeah, 2018 in February, when I was doing my first workshops, I was nervous about it because I was nervous that someone would ask me a question that I would not have closure on. And looking back then, I definitely didn't have closure on the grammar when I began teaching it. But that was okay, simply because I had a safety net, and that safety net was Raven. Raven told me, hey, if you run into a question or something that you don't know, contact me. I'll be there. I will help you. And it was him that pushed me to start teaching. Well, he didn't push me, but he encouraged me to start teaching. He felt I was ready by his assessment. And if you're going to have a teacher, you have to trust that teacher. That's part of it, a trust count. You put your trust in them, for them to know as far as what the subject is that they're teaching to you, that they know what's best for you and what you can do. You have to have that trust there. Otherwise, you're pro it's probably not going to turn out good for you. So I also suggest that to, to my students as well. Because there are some students that become quite confrontational when they don't understand something or something I tell them directly conflicts with something they heard somewhere else from someone else that they participate with that protagonist centered morality type of mentality. And, but I mean, it's, it's not a problem to deal with. It's just a situation that occurs where they will ask me a question or confront me on something simply because they heard it somewhere else. And then I'll simply say, what's your proof of that? What's your closure on that? What you're claiming. If you're claiming I'm doing something wrong, or someone else does it differently than me, then give me closure on your way of doing it or their way of doing it. And they can't, you know, they can't do it. And then they realize, you know, what am I doing? Because we're talking about firsthand knowledge here. And I always make sure to give closure or sources for closure for everything that I claim with this grammar. And that's why I've been successful with it. That's why I can do what I do and teach what I teach. I'm not one of these guys that said, well, it's because Russell said so, or it's because David said so. No, that doesn't work. That may be good for the authoritarian followers, but I don't subscribe to that at all. I subscribe to doing it yourself, learning it yourself, doing your own research, and getting your own closure. If you make a claim, better be able to prove it. If not, it's just an opinion and you don't have a position. Well, of course you can share an opinion. I mean, opinions are like... Uh, <laughs> You know, they're like noses. Everyone has one, I guess. So, to draw this to a close, I would also like to give a gift, not a gift, give a shout out of gratitude to Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, who brought this technology to the public. If it wasn't for him bringing this out here, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. I can say that. I can say that I did have, do have, a great deal of fondness for the man and what he did and the way he treated me 
There's no doubt about it. And I can say that while at the same time saying that there are mistakes all over his grammar, his performances, and his book on his website, and the documents that he created. And I'm pretty sure if he were here today, he wouldn't deny it. Because when I first started speaking with him, as I showed, I think, in my journey video, my very first journey video that I published, he actually asked, I said I would create, I would correct the errors on his website, the spelling errors, and he said, send the errors to me or something like that. So he's well aware of it. So it's not a big deal. And I feel like he would have been open to correcting those things. His student, Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, on the other hand, I don't, is obviously not open to doing that because he learned from David and David made those mistakes, those errors. Russell also makes the same exact errors. But Russell is not open to correcting any of that. Um, definitely not because I have brought it up multiple, multiple, multiple times to him and his followers. And although they have corrected some things, of course they don't ever give me credit uh, for bringing that to the attention. But it's, it's nice for me to see when I look at some of their stuff that they've definitely been watching my videos. <laughs> so since I brought the name up, I'm also very grateful to Russell J. Gould for the videos that he published prior to 2016. Um, I'm not a fan of anything he's done after 2016. But prior to 2016, he was dropping some real heavy knowledge out there. He was dropping postal mechanics. He was dropping shipping mechanics, banking mechanics, flag mechanics. A, ple a plethora of knowledge in those videos that he would do. Which, if you look at those videos, the educational knowledge cultivation content that he was putting out back then compared to the content and volition of the videos he does now or after 20, 2017, the volition is totally different and there really is no knowledge being shared at all. Not like he was doing before, which is very interesting. Such a drastic change happened. Well, it's actually not a surprise because he modified the whole his whole corporate construct. I mean, David once told me that two is corporate, two is certification. And if you take one of those two away and you only have one, now it's an opinion. So David passed away, he's no longer part of the corporate structure. So now guess what Russell is? And he bottlenecked the technology. He changed everything. He tried to make, well, he was cultivating the, the concept that no one could have a valid live life claim unless it had his autograph, his thumbprint on it. Which, I guess if you want to contract with him in his quasi-quantum quantum grammar construct, I mean, that's what you got to do. Whereas before that, anyone, no, no one ever had to send a live life claim to David or Russell. Matter of fact, I made a video where you hear David saying, don't send them to us. But then Russell changed that, changed a lot of things. And as we all know, as David said, change is modification, modification is perjury. And I'll leave it at that. But again, I just want to say that I'm grateful for Russell and his knowledge he dropped prior to 2017, 2016 in those videos prior to 2017 2016 thank you very much and also to thank him for the emails and the knowledge that he shared with me in 2017 18 and 19 which i have on file and will probably be publishing sometime in the near future all right that about wraps it up thank you very much for listening to this podcast uh, if you're interested in correct grammar workshops you can email me at the email address at the bottom of your screen like subscribe share and I'll catch you next time. Salut.